going on today? Uh, two mile warm up, 10 miles at moderate effort, probably 540 to six minute pace. Uh, and then 10 miles at marathon effort, um, doing 20 of the miles on a hillier route, warm up, cool down, kind of flat. Goal Ryan set out was to be attacking the hills at the end and to have my fastest two miles be my last two miles. So gonna try to be patient, smart, execute, get her done. It's gonna be tough, man. It's gonna be good, though. It's a little breezy coming home. Isn't that nice how it's headwind uphill? <laughs> so. I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. Then I'm gonna go like out a half mile, flip, start, flip at mailboxes, come back, finish a little pass here for the 10 hard. How's the body feeling so far? Um, Heat? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you never know until you get two, three miles into this next part. Like, it's kind of a anticipatory pain. So, it's, I think we'll be okay. It is gonna be hot, but that's good. The training stimulus, so. Practice managing effort through heat and hills. Throw altitude on there. Just to uh, make it a little tougher than it already would be. It was it was brutal once you come up those hills, but as soon as you crest that last hill, it's like all the life comes back in your legs. So, just gotta tell myself that. Needless to say, that didn't go as planned. Oh, really? Doesn't always, though. Now I got clap. When did it hit then? Uh, I could tell it was gonna be hard going out. Um, just felt hot, just felt hard. Then flipped into that headwind coming up that hill, mile six to seven, and my heart rate just fucking skyrocketed. Then I took a little break, tried to get it back, told myself, all right, let's see if we can regroup. Got through that big hill. And I was like, okay, I'm like way over my line and it's hot out here. And I'm just, sometimes, sometimes you crush workouts, sometimes they crush you. And I think there's something to be learned in days where you like feel that falling apart. And sometimes I like to try to rally and get it through, but today didn't feel like the time to do that I felt like that was enough for the day and yeah it's humbling it's good it's a good time to get this I had probably my best threshold ever out here last week so I know I'm fit it's just sometimes sometimes you just get whooped let's check the temp see what it says we are right now come on no service here it's like 67. 
82 right now. What's the UV? High. Does it say? It says seven. seven. That's pretty high. Yeah, man, it's just. It's gonna be on asphalt. Like, this is hotter. Should be up here. Oh, tastes a little better right I wish now. It was. You. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think I got 114 or 15 miles on the week. Another big week. Three workouts this week. Just trying to accumulate that strength. No down weeks yet. Down week when we taper. We'll, we'll taper. This is the get through the thick of it. Try to adapt on the fly. You got 20 miles tomorrow? <laughs> no. <laughs> 12 and 8. Easy day tomorrow. 12 and 8. No. Yeah, so first off, last last week was my biggest week ever. So that could be a piece of it. 128 on the week. Uh, 225 mile days. One including snowball. That was last Sunday, so a week ago. And then I came off of that Tuesday, I did two by three mile with Bia at like 450 pace. At like 7,300 feet. Yeah, on a hilly loop as well. And then Thursday I did uh, 20 by 200 on the track with 200 jog. And then a PM up tempo double at like 530s ish. And then uh, yeah, I rounded out this week here today with marathon simulation and 22 on the day. 115 on the week. Yeah, so next week hopefully regroup, get another big big threshold effort in and get the momentum back on my side. What's up guys? So this video is all about the little things. In a race like the Olympics, when I'm a 208 guy and I'm going to attempt to compete against 202, 203, 204 marathoners, people with minutes better personal best than I, I think that the one way to gain an advantage over people that are just flat out fitter than me is to prepare for the elements and the course better than they can. Uh, so there's a few things I've done the past two summers getting ready for the world championships uh, that I am implementing once again for the Paris Olympic Games and uh, it's pretty simple so on all my easy recovery runs I like to overdress in dark colors wearing black long sleeves tights jackets whatever it is to just create like a intense environment for my body to create a heat adaptation. Um, I find this to be uh, helpful for when we get to hot, humid conditions. I don't feel, you know, run down by the heat. Last year in Budapest, it was the hottest marathon I've ever run by about 15, 20 degrees, and I felt like I was able to execute really well there. So obviously, uh, it's worked for me in the past, and I am extremely proud of my ability to dial in really small details like this. Uh, I also implement sauna training more so towards the tail end as a peaking effect. This is a protocol that I've done. I usually do for actually all my marathons because it's just good for general fitness, but it's a special emphasis on marathons that I've run in the summer. So Eugene last year, Budapest, well, Eugene two years ago, Budapest last year, and now with Paris coming up, you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, it could be good temps, but usually it's on the warmer end, so a uh, little heat acclimatization through sauna training is a regular, and I think most uh, distance runners routine getting ready for summer races. Um, so here we are just doing probably 20 to 30 minutes in the sauna. This is something I'd like to add more towards my peaking phase in training. So we're 33 days out from Paris. Uh, I'll probably do 10 to 12 sessions from here on in. 
uh, so every other, every third day kind of thing. Um, increase, I don't know all the science stuff. I'm not a scientist, I just know that people tell me it's really good for you. Dr. Huberman has podcasts on this stuff if you're into you know, the, the science of why we do this. <laughs> but it's basically just creating adaptation in the body um, and making you a little bit better in the in the tough elements and just fitter overall. It's very really good for your overall health. So um, something I, I'll regularly do to make a little bit of difference. And that's just the heat side. Aside from that, one of the most important details of this specific Olympics is the course. The course is extremely hilly. 1,400 feet of vert. That's twice the elevation of the Boston Marathon, which is a marathon known for its hills. And I, uh, I think it's really, really important to prepare your legs for the pounding that they're going to take on a course like that. Um, I personally have been making it a point to do almost all my recovery runs on moderately hilly routes, doing all my key sessions, long runs on hilly routes, and this has come at a cost, right? So I'm not running as fast of paces on these routes. Uh, sometimes I feel run down or beat up. Uh, it's created a different variable for recovery for me, but in the long game, hopefully it prepares my legs for the muscle demand that a course like Paris will have on them. And I feel like I've always been good at hills. I've always liked hills. It's something that I want to make uh, my bread and butter for this race. So I want to be the best on the course, best prepared for the course. So the way I've done that is I've tried to run, you know, 6,000 feet of vert a week on average. Uh, some weeks I get a little under, some weeks I get a little over, uh, and I've been trying to increase my volume this block. Again, just the little things that can make a little bit of a difference in your overall preparation for the course and the demands. Uh, I'm a 208 guy, that's good, but I'm gonna be racing against guys that have run 201, 202, 203. I have to be more prepared for the conditions and the course in order to gain a competitive advantage over people that flat out are just better at running than me. Yeah, so some of the other little things that I'm doing, I, I'm always doing, but I'm especially kicking up the intensity in these last uh, few weeks. Um, I get massaged twice a week in the final month or two of training. Just basically the idea behind that is to reduce injury risk and freshen me up and keep me optimal for uh, the big workouts I have to do. Um, marathon training is super demanding and a lot of people, you know, self-massage or ice bath, You have, there's tons of modalities you can do to emphasize your recovery. For me personally, I've always been a big fan of, of massage uh, and it's been something that is, I think, attributed to my pretty clean slate of health throughout my career. Um, you know, I just think regular body work is so much better than like waiting till something's really wrong and then having to get a ton of body work. So normally I see massage therapists once a week, uh, but since I'm in the peak of marathon training, I'm seeing two different people once a week. So the person that I just saw today was Michael Harrison, local guy here in Flagstaff, works with a lot of pro runners. He uses a lot of techniques like uh, gua sha, which is like the scraping with the tool that is uh, really beneficial for just breaking up scar tissue and, and moving blood through the body. And so I find him to be very helpful for marathon training because I feel like things just get stuck for me um, when, I'm, when I'm in the thick of it and especially in my calves and in my hips and stuff, things just lock up and he's been really good for releasing my, my hips and keeping my lower legs super uh, healthy at this stage. So uh, I'll see him every week until I leave for Europe and um, I have another person that I like for different reasons. So it's kind of a fun thing like you, uh, you kind of learn what you like and what, what helps you for different things. But massage is another one of those little things that I like to do to just really assure that I get to the start line healthy because the only thing that can stop me at this point, I'm fit, I've been putting in the work, is not being healthy. Oh, man. Dude, someone asked me just the other day, they're like, hey, I noticed you use Blank's bottles in your YouTube videos. What's your favorite flavor? I said, great, baby. I want some great drink, baby. Mm, it's purple. 
grape. Give me that grape. Talking about we don't trust anyone who likes grape. <laughs> well, I like grape. I do. Make sure that you're adequately decelerating while you're going. Decel. This is the decel phase. Yeah. So which is downhill is, running. Right. So a lot of decel. So you're running up a mountain, then you got to run down a mountain. A lot of decel. And we're just making sure that you have the strength to be able to decelerate running down without like rolling down the windows and eating. Well, sometimes <laughs> the, this is efficient. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But yeah. So that's what we're doing. That's pretty good. Okay. So Thoracic one. spine mobility and that's lat it. Strength. Lat strength. <laughs> and what do lats have to do with running? So, okay, I'm asking. Assist. I'm asking for the people. Right. So posterior oblique rotation. So oh, rotation on the back of your body. So if you're tired and your glute fails, your opposite lat tends to take over hip extension. Which is why we engage opposite glute and lat at the same time in a lot of these. Perfect. Okay. We out for a run, Sky? It's warm. It's probably 75 to 80 degrees. Dog is tired. We're about 20 minutes in. All right, so we just did about 10K run 45 minutes ish it's warm we're overdressed get some fluids back this is sky sky is my number one running partner we've done 517 miles together this year so she's been on about 20 percent of my mileage for the year so been fun running with her on my easy days and uh you can tell she's hot obviously so 33 days, yeah, 33 days to Paris. Um, this is when like the details are the most important. Early in the block, it's just laying the foundation, doing the work, getting getting things set up. I always find the last five, six weeks, you know, you're already fit, but you're just, just fine tuning everything. You're getting everything in place. Yesterday's workout, <coughs> the marathon simulation didn't go great. Uh, kind of got waxed by the conditions and that hurt hurt the ego um, obviously I would have loved to have nailed that but I've got a couple more really big ones and sometimes it's good to have that failure in a workout to kind of go okay what could I do differently where could I fuel differently how could I pace it differently how can I you know read the body's signs before I crack because I cracked there right so in the marathon, the biggest detriment to performance is like you you bonking, you you going over your line and not coming back. Because once you go over it in, in a long effort, you're not coming back. You're gonna slowly, slowly fall apart to the finish. So there's no like return to form once you crack. Uh, so for me, taking that information on the workout where I failed and where I where I did fall apart, and trying to see what. I can do differently with my fueling, with my pacing, with my cooling strategies. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be gonna be paramount for Paris. Yeah, and running, and the reason why I'm doing this one today is because you know I can run up and then I can flip and kind of bomb down without being too at risk because the softer surface I find a little easier but obviously just as important as the up is the down so practicing trash in the legs running fast downhill been fun i wouldn't want to do too much of that on snowball for a number of reasons the shoulders crap but this one's fun i did this i don't know two weeks ago three weeks ago and i did uh 20 minutes up made it about three miles and then i bombed down in like 15 minutes so it was like five minute pace coming down, which is like the first mile here is like pretty moderate and then it gets pretty steep after like 2K. And then it's just all the way up and it's some switchbacks and it's fun. Get a little bit of shade, which is nice on a hot day like this. The first mile is pretty exposed, but once you get in there, it gets a little better, so. We'll see how far I go. I kind of want to go to the top, but I have to kind of see how I feel and like read it. Uh, which would take me probably 
thir like, well, I hold the, the segment for this, 31 minutes and change. So uh, if I'm feeling really good, I might just go for the segment, but it's hot. It's my second workout of the day. I was at the track this morning doing 400s. So it's really just reading the body, but at least I'll do 25 minutes up. That's the minimum. So I might get pretty close and then flip, which will feel like a bailout. But mm -hmm. the point is just sub threshold work uphill and down. So okay. first mile is always tough. 